Well, good morning, my fellow men walking this semen retention journey with me. It is June 1st, 2024. I want to apologize, guys, for not making a video in a long time. It's been a rough start of the year, losing my sales career job that I had had for the last seven years. was laid off in March, and then soon after, experienced a foundation leak underneath my condo and it flooded the the place and I had to have the floors replaced uh, you know obviously the plumbers had to come out and drill through the through my kitchen floor to fix the leak and I still don't have my insurance homeowners insurance claim settled so but anyway guys I want to talk to you today because we're looking at this fat greasy burger I hope I didn't make you hungry it's making me hungry but we all know that this greasy cheeseburger here double beef patty loaded with fat and grease and you know we've got our bread that's not good for us it's starch it's just you know starchy calories uh it sure tastes good though we like i love these things man they give us pleasure to the brain when we eat it we may not even be necessarily hungry so that's my point guys just because this burger tastes really good it's not necessarily good for you. So that brings us to 1 Corinthians 6, 12 through 13. How does this relate to semen retention? To the journey that you fellow brothers are on with me to put away the spirit of lust, to put it out of our lives, guys. It's a struggle. We struggle daily with it. It's like I say, we have to wake up, make the decision not to become a slave to lust. So what is 1 Corinthians 6, 12, 13? By the way, here's the website. We're at biblia.com. I will post this link in the description of the video. If you've noticed, I have a new way of making videos now with my desktop computer. So hopefully the video quality has cha will change for the better. But back to the verse, it, they, <clears throat> it's even titled sexual immorality because that's what they're referring to but you know we can apply this to other parts of our life so it says i have the right to do anything you say but not everything is beneficial so back to the hamburger we have the right to eat this burger is it really beneficial to our body um and you know it doesn't have to be a hamburger it could be just sugar it could be a just a candy bar a milkshake uh Anything that's really not good for our body, we have the right to eat it. But is it beneficial? That's the question. I have the right to do anything, but I will not be mastered by anything. So we have the right to eat what we want, but will you be mastered by that? We have the right to look at dirty images on the internet, but is that beneficial? Are we a slave to that habit of, of, of looking and releasing and lusting? So verse 13 says, You say food for the stomach and the stomach for food, and God will destroy them both. The body, however, is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. So that verse is saying, God didn't design us for sexual immorality but for uh, a temple of the lord we were designed for him here's some the english standard version all things are lawful for me but not all things are helpful all things are lawful for me but i will not be dominated by anything Here's the King James Version. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Meats for the belly and belly for the meats, but God shall destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. Here's a more modern version, guys new century version i am allowed to do all things but all 
but not all things are good for me to do. I am allowed to do all things, but I will not let anything make me its slave. So are you a slave to the pornography on the internet or on your phone? Or I mean, we all seem to be if we're trying to put away the lust and the looking and the releasing, the fornicating, guys, the fapping. <clears throat> if we're engaged in that all the time, and that's a part of our life, then we're a slave to it. So we're allowed to do that, but is it good for you? If you are practicing semen retention, you've come to the realization that it's really not good for you. Looking and fornicating and sexual immorality is what Christianities refer to the fornicating, the looking, the releasing, the lusting. Okay? Christians call that sexual immorality because it's against God's law. And that's why the law exists, to separate the light from the dark. So we know what the light is. We know the light is good and the dark is bad. And so the sexual immorality is from the darkness. How about one more version? Here's a... Uh, let's go with a... New Revised Standard Version. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are beneficial. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. Food is meant for the stomach and the stomach for food, and God will destroy both one and the other. The body is meant not for fornication, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. So, guys... That's my uh, short video for today. Good to see you guys and talk to you. Praying for all my listeners. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he turn his face toward you and give you his peace. Talk to you guys later.